Ooh, she right. Oof. Better? Literally starting out this video with one of my favorites. <laughs> Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel, or if this is your first time to my channel, hi, my name is Sarah. Also, if this is your first time to my channel, subscribe if you're lurking, because a lot of you guys are lurking. Of course, even saying subscribe probably won't make you subscribe if you guys just want to lurk, you little creeps. The majority of you guys actually watching this aren't actually subscribed, so if you want to just click the... Yeah. Anyways, so getting into today's video, I think it's my last one or almost last one of the year. I'm bringing on 2020, but this video is about products and stuff. Basically just a lot of stuff that I have or haven't been liking during the year of 2019. I used to do these videos all the time, like literally probably about once a month, like two or three years ago, and it got to the point where I was just buying things just to try them out and then I just, it got really exhausting, it got very expensive, so now it's just like almost the end of year favorites because I actually have like an entire year to kind of just try things out and see if I like them. To keep this video on a more positive note, at least to start with, and because I already used this on camera for you guys, I'm going to be going over my favorites first. And the first of the bunch is this guy right here. This is the Ole Henriksen, I think that's how you say the name of it. Balancing Force Oil Control Toner. Green Fusion Complex, Neem Seed Oil, Salicylic Acid and AHA, Green Fusion Complex, and then the rest is in French. But basically what I do with this is, as you guys did see, I just put a little bit on a cotton round and then just kind of like it on my face. Generally I use these in the morning when I've just done a gentle cleanse on my face because in the morning I don't actually feel like I have to wash it as much as I usually would at night with an exfoliant or anything like that, especially because it does have salicylic acid in it and AHA and that's going to be a chemical exfoliant so you do get the slight exfoliation without having to go in with actual physical exfoliants. The more you know. Next up on the dock because I'm talking about skincare, I'm going to be going into how about how I take off my makeup. So like regularly, just like everyday makeup, I take it off with the e.l.f. Makeup Remover Balm. Now this can be found in basically any drugstore or obviously just on elf.com. And it comes in a little lipstick holder basically. Because it is a balm, it's going to have that consistency to it. So basically all you gotta do is open it up and then... I basically only wear like eye makeup and eyebrows, whether that be like a full on eye makeup look or just mascara, and this takes off every single thing. So with this, I would just go in and I would put this all over my eyebrows, so I'm not going to do it now because I'm not going to lose my makeup, but I go... And then after I let that melt through a little bit because obviously it is a balm, so it is going to melt down a little bit with your skin's natural heat. And with that being said, I'd come in with a reusable makeup removing cloth, however with that being said, if I'm going to be removing special effects looks, since you guys maybe have seen a couple of special effects looks I've done on my channel, with body painting specifically, it is kind of a little bit more difficult to come in with something like this. So what I will do instead is come in with this guy right here. This is the Physician's Formula, the perfect match, a three-in-one melting cleansing balm. So how I use this is the moment that you take off the lid to it, you scrub the lid and then inside is a little spatula. With the spatula, I tend to use that quite a bit because obviously I'm taking off body paint so I don't want to contaminate the rest of the container. So, I take a little bit, depending on where the body paint is concentrated, and then I just rub it in. Let it become an emollient. So I just go like this, all over. And then, again, that warm reusable washcloth that I mentioned that takes off makeup, just use that and then wring it out. Obviously with like full out special effects stuff like spirit gum or prosade or liquid latex, you can either take it off with isopropyl mirror state or the specific remover. Continuing on to what I do after that which is cleanse my face. So I do have quite sensitive skin a lot of the time. Not super, super, super sensitive to the point of like, if anything touches it, it goes red, but because I put a lot on my face, it tends to soak up a lot of that stuff. It's begun to be a little bit more sensitive these days. So that being said, I use Buddy Moon, which is a jelly face mask. I use it as a cleanser from Lush. Now this one is made with honey, calming rose oil, and sweet vanilla to moisturize and soothe sensitive skin. I probably have about three of these on hand at one time just so I know I won't run out of them. On the days I need a little bit more of an exfoliant but I don't want to go like full out and I don't want to use a chemical exfoliant, I use Let the Good Times Roll. This is a face and body cleanser so you can use this all over your body if you want as well or just obviously on the face. Buff skin to softness with our sweet balancing maize flower and corn oil cleanser. So this doesn't have 
harsh explained. It has maize flour and corn oil in it, which you can smell the minute you open it. It smells so harshly of corn, which I don't mind personally, but I would probably recommend only using this really in the shower, kind of like how I had Scrub 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 or Black Angels. Those I would use in the shower. It is a little bit of a messier cleanser, it will say that. I mean, Bunny Moon definitely sticks to my skin a little bit better and just washes off easily with a washcloth. But Let the Good Times Roll is kind of a little bit chunkier even when you add water to it. And if I am dealing with some sensitive skin times, I am using Bunny Moon, but I want to be a little bit of a harsher exfoliant, I use a cup of coffee. This again is a face and body mask. I use it as a slight cleanser. Again, I add a little bit of water to it to thin out slightly. It says kickstart your day with a stimulating blend of fresh ground coffee, kaolin, and agave syrup. Now, I've gotten very messy with this, but the minute that you open it, it just smells like the morning. Like, this is generally meant to use in the mornings because it's obviously with coffee, it's gonna wake your skin up a little bit more. But I typically use this at night because I'm staying awake anyways, it doesn't really matter past that. <laughs> Guess we have a little bit of a thing going on here. Another cleanser that I tend to use is the Tatcha, the Deep Cleanse. I am kind of going in between cleansers because your skin obviously will get used to something if you use it way too much. So I go between two to three cleansers at a time, maybe even a fourth if my skin's really going between periods. If my skin's going from a really, really harsh summer to winter, then I will jumpstart another skincare routine. But I got really dog. I got this as not a sample, but like it's like a holiday two-in-one kind of thing with this and the moisturizer that goes along with this, which is also I want to add it to my favorites because it's the water cream, but I cannot for life of me find it. But this is the deep cleanse and there's a little bit of a learning curve and I almost didn't buy it because of everybody's comment on the learning curve, but luckily I was able to find quite a few reviews that kind of prompted me more to want this. And with this, you're going to have to shake it out a little bit, like not shake it, shake it too much, but just kind of go and then obviously I'm not going to open it because then that would actually make me have to wash my face because I'd be wasting product otherwise, but you, f you flick it once, you get all the product down to the bottom because it is a little bit thicker of a consistency instead of being here, you want it to be here, and then you open it up and just squirt a little bit into your hand, just kind of a little bit into your hand, add a little bit of water either to the palms of your hand and then kind of rub it together or put it on a brushly wet face and then wash it off obviously. After I've done all of that, as I stated, I cannot for life me find the water cream right now, but the Tatcha water cream is really really good as well. It's like a slight jelly consistency, like not like a gel like the next product I'm about to mention, but gel as in like, it's like almost like a molasses consistency. But then when you apply it to your face because it is a gel to water cream, it just sinks right into the skin and it feels amazing, especially for oily and acne prone skin because it is a more weightless moisturizer. Next up is a toothpaste jelly. Now, honestly, there's not much difference between this and using an actual toothpaste that's kind of like peppermint flavored. This does taste like candy cane for the most part, but I really like it because it's not allowing a lot more into the waist. This is more about Lush as a company itself. I have only used this like once or twice. It smells absolutely amazing, but the idea behind it is really, really cool. It literally is just a jelly, so it's not like, oh my god, it's like the most innovative thing ever because obviously a lot of companies are coming out with jelly-related things right now, but I will say it looks pretty cool and as I said, it's a little less waste to put into the environment right now because you can bring these back to Lush or as I like to do actually, I tend to use these to put my glitter in. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Something that was in my favorites last year, I believe, that I want to add again because it's still my favorite and I'm still always going to get a bunch of them, is going to be this guy right here, which is like falling apart in my hands. It is a body wash. You can get this in the naked version, which is exactly the one I have, or in the bottle version, and that is going to be a naked body wash. Not much to say about this, honestly. If you guys have seen my last Lush video, which was the Christmas Lush video, you know that I'm absolutely insane and crazy over the Snow Fairy scent, and that's no different. Next up on the docket, during the winter months, my feet tend to get a little bit drier, but like also kind of like oily because they're feet. They're constantly changing temperatures, and alongside that, they get very sore. So something I've been using recently is the Yognog body conditioner, but I don't use this how you're supposed to use this, allegedly. This says velvety decadent moisture with a mouth-watering caramel perfume, which is accurate to the description of the scent. I can smell caramel and kind of just like eggnog. Basically, it smells like a very caramelly based eggnog. And the general way that I've seen this being used is you put it on in the shower and then you wash it off. But how I've been using this is putting it on my feet and massaging it into my feet because it's extremely rich and moisturizing and my feet really need that. <laughs> 
I have only been using this maybe for the past like month or two, but I find it really, really works. My feet are a little bit less dry, <laughs> which I mean, my feet, like I said, they've been going through some stuff. So anyways, that's enough feet talk for today. Another thing I wanted to mention when it comes to like cleansing and stuff is actually going to be for my hair. Now, I use shampoo bars and these ones are going to be from Lush specifically. I don't know if you can actually get any shampoo bars from any other places because I haven't really looked into it. But the ones I use from Lush are so complete because as I said, my skin has been going through a time this year all over my body. Whether that be with my hair, my feet, my face. We all going through some times right now. I'm getting like a little bit of dandruff, maybe TMI, I don't know. But I've been getting some dandruff and so Soak and Flow has definitely been helping me out. But I also get dry dandruff so I've been wanting to add some moisture back into it. Shampoo is going to take some of the moisture out of your hair because that's what shampoo does is it removes the excess oil and dirt. So I've been using a combination of Soak and Float and Honey I Wash My Hair. I used to use the hashtag cruelty free or I think it's called new. I use that to prompt hair growth. Essentially it has cinnamon in it and cinnamon is good for stimulating the scalp. So I definitely recommend that one as well if you're trying to get your hair to grow a little bit faster or a little bit more luscious. It, I mean granted it's not going to be a lifesaver like it's not going to be instant overnight but it, I definitely found that it did help my hair grow a little bit. But yeah, so I definitely do like those guys. So Soak and Float doesn't really smell all that much like anything. It literally just smells clean. And Honey, I Wash My Hair, as the name would suggest, smells like honey. It smells more sweet. It's not like scary sweet like Snow Fairy would be, but it's just sweet in itself. It's like a sweet shampoo. So almost about a year ago, I went into Lush. I know, we're all shocked, I know. And I wanted to test out a few new cleansers because I was having, like I said, a lot of problems with my skin. And I was going to try this one out and they actually decided to give me a sample of it. I ended up getting a sample from them and the sample was this little guy here. Now it was obviously a little bit bigger than that, but I have been using it pretty consistently. This is what I use in the morning before I go in with my Ole Henriksen. It gives you a very, very light cleanse, but it also does obviously take off the dirt from the night before. Now I went back for the full size and I've been using this actively instead. It is called Fresh Pharmacy. It is technically a facial soap. I think it's more targeted towards men. No offense or anything, but men tend to use more soaps on their face than anything, so I think it's kind of trying to target more towards them. It's for incredibly sensitive skin. Allow us to prescribe you a bar of our pale pink cleansing bar with chamomile extract to calm, rose and lavenders to soothe dry patches, and white tea to help keep skin clear and clean. With lots of calamine powder to calm troubled skin, this facial soap is great for gently easing skin back into balance, which I find accurate. I unfortunately have very hormonal skin, so it's constantly breaking out. This has definitely kept it at ease a little bit. Now I'm going to be putting on my next photo while talking about it, and that is the Burt's Bees lip balms. Now these are in no particular order or anything. Neither of these really taste all that super great, but they are incredibly moisturizing, so I just kind of like deal with it. It's like, it's like Buckley's. They taste awful, but they do work. <laughs> this is probably going to be my favorite lip product of the year, because honestly it just works and I am a lip balm like fiend like my lips are constantly constantly dry and they're constantly constantly cracking so it's definitely helped out quite a bit this year as for my hair as i did mention i have had hair problems in the past and by that i mean i bleached the absolute crap out of it and by that i mean i bleached the absolute crap out of it but i have been leaving it alone constantly for almost i would say two and a half years the last time i remember dying it was i think two and a half or three years ago in january that might be two and a half years ago now because it's not quite january but almost i dyed my hair red for christmas and then i dyed it back to my natural color weeks after that because we all know how much red fades but besides that i have been growing my hair out i have not been dying and i've not been doing anything to it for that entire time but i still obviously have some ends that i'm worried about and with that being said i've been using olaplex now i know everybody everybody knows about olaplex already but maybe for some people they don't i only use the number six one which is the bond smoother it's a leave-in reparative styling cream it eliminates frizz hydrates and protects now with that being said I don't use this as a styling cream, I just use it as a leave-in conditioner. It is a little bit thicker, so it does weigh my hair down a little bit, but because my hair is already pretty long, the little bit it weighs it down doesn't really matter to me as long as it's keeping my hair on the healthier side. And next up is something ha I've actually mentioned already, but in a different aspect, and that's going to be body paint. I mentioned how I take my body paint off, but these are the body paints that I always, always use. It's either between these or Mayron. These are the FAB Fab, which is face and body paints. These guys are just your regular run-of-the-mill water-activated paints, but I do find that these are extremely pigmented. Their color payoff is very nice. Yes, Sarah, that's what extremely pigmented means. 
I find them to actually be a lot easier to use than most other water activated paints I've used. I've used the Snazaroo ones, which is what I started out with, and I didn't really like those. For Mayron, I really only use the black or when these guys run out. Like when I run out of a certain color, I'll go to the Mayron ones. For the majority of it, the face and body ones, they're from fxcosplay.com. I'll link them in the description box below because it is a little bit difficult to find. But I definitely, as you can see, I definitely picked it as a favorite. <laughs> as for the tools I use, and that sounds really awkward actually now that I'm saying it out loud. There's basically only two here. One of them you already saw me use, and that's going to be these guys right here, which are the organic brown cosmetic pads. Soft surface, ideal for cleansing makeup and nail polish removal. 80 pads comes in this guy. Honestly, the brand doesn't matter. I tend to go for organic because, first of all, it costs the same price as the regular as far as places I've gone to get them. But honestly, I'm trying to be better off with being eco-friendly as you guys may have seen with all my Christmas videos. I use them to take off my eye makeup when I'm actually like washing my face and stuff. I use them to add toner to my face. I use them for a cluster of different reasons, but something that will always make it into my favorite video and that is the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. This guy I use for basically all my makeup. Um, sometimes I use it to outline body painting and stuff like that, but for the majority I use it on my eyelids to do very colorful looks because if you add a white base down, you're going to get the most bright, intense color payoff that you can from any any kind of eyeshadow. This is a long video. Next up is the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. Now, as you can probably tell, or maybe not because it's very shiny, this is super, super used. I probably kept this way longer than you're supposed to. Yeah, it says six months and I probably had this for a year. Um, I don't follow that rule, especially when I really, really like one. I did buy the other one previously, which was just the Kush mascara, and then I ended up having it flake off way too much, so then I thought maybe upgrade to the waterproof, and that has helped tremendously. But this guy right here, you can get the travel size if you do want to, obviously try it, but I definitely recommend the bigger size because it's just... It lasts so long, it's insane. I don't feel like it's marketed as Kush Mascara that it actually does anything to my lashes besides just make them look great. The one thing I'll give myself on a pat on the back for is the fact that my lashes look great when they have this on them. You know, it's something that I need, need, need in my possession at all times and that I absolutely love when I have like three or four on hand at a time just so I know I will never run out of it. Speaking of, <laughs> these guys right here, which I no longer even have the lids on because I've been using them for so long. So they are the two brow products I use on a daily basis. Actually, two of the three, but these are the actual colored brow product. This is the ColourPop Precision Brow Pencil in Dope Toe, and this one is the, the ColourPop Brow Boss in Light Brown. Like I said, here is different color than here, so I have to use these to match here with here. I use those, I use this guy, which is the Brow Boss to define them, and then this one to kind of just fill them in because I find it's a little bit more precise. And then, the last thing, I add this guy onto it. So this is the Essence Lash and Brow Gel and Gel Mascara Style and Comb, which I'm not going to show you guys up close because it's gross because it's picked up the pigment from the other ones. But, this is what I always, always, always use to set my brows. I kind of switch between this and the e.l.f. one, but this is always my go-to, it's always the one I continue on. One more thing, actually, that I wanted to add. An accurate, accurate representation of my life. This is the Atlee, aka Ashley. She is on YouTube as Atlee. I will link her in the description box down below if you haven't already seen her. But she has been making merch for a couple of years now to do with Ashtoberfest, which is her October Halloween series on her channel. But she also just does merch throughout the year. And I decided that on her Black Friday, I think it was Black Friday or Cyber Monday sale, that I was going to finally pick up some items and she did not disappoint. I do not regret it at all. I have been wearing this hoodie for longer than I care to admit. It is extremely comfy and much better than the Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson one. No tea, no shade, just the fact that I do not agree with killer merch and I don't think that they should be supported, but... And lastly for my favorites, got this guy right here, which... <laughs> Looks inappropriate, especially after I've said tools, but it is a silicone face brush. I don't know if you guys can hear that. You can get basically any one of these. I don't recommend the Lunas, not because they don't work, because I wouldn't know if they work. They are damn expensive for something that you could get at a lower price range for the same kind of product. I think I bought this for like 20 bucks or like 15 bucks, which is outrageous in a good way. Considering the Luna, I think is like two to five hundred dollars or something. It's just not shaming you if you have one, because obviously, like, go you if you can afford that. I am a broke-ass bitch, I am a cheap-ass bitch, and if I can get something for cheaper, I'm probably gonna try to get it for cheaper, unless it's making employees day hell, then I will just let it go. Which you guys might have seen if you saw trying Starbucks Halloween stuff when I forgot my cake pop. Forgot. 
But yeah, how I use these guys, I use them almost with every cleanser I've ever used. Depending on the cleanser itself, I either put it directly onto the brush head and add a little bit of water to it or add a little bit of water to it first. It's one of those like almost brushing your teeth things where you get the water to the brush before or after you've added your toothpaste. Everybody's different apparently. Do we put pineapple on pizza? Who's to say? Either onto my face and kind of just like rub it onto my face and use this as an extra amount of cleaning or I put it onto here first and then I use it onto my face like that. And I think the last things I'm going to mention here are things... I don't even think that I mentioned them last year. Yeah, they because they came out this year. The highlight and blush sticks from ColourPop. My three favorites are going to be More is More, which is a very... It is dual chromatic. Like, it is absolutely beautiful. I will swatch it for you guys if you'd like. Not that you have a choice, because I'm doing it anyways. It's got kind of like a pinky yellow gold flip to it. Then there's Totes, which is a very orange toned pink. A tangerine, I'd say. And then the love of my life, the only highlighter that I use. I hope that's actually picking up on camera, but that's flying high. I'm going to say that with actual like full on blush, I use totes, but besides that, I usually tend to mix these two together, which is again, more is more in this one because they're both duochromatic and they Together they pair so nicely and they have the most beautiful actual like combined flip to them. My last little guy is probably going to be this one right here which is the Love Lust Disco. Now I'm not saying it's the best eyeliner in the entire world or anything because it is the only eyeliner I'm putting into this video but I do find it incredibly easy to use and it's metallic which is really cool because you don't see a lot of those on the market. This is going to be a pink metallic eyeliner. You definitely don't see a lot of pink metallic eyeliners on the market. That is it for my favorites. There was a lot. I did a lot of talking, but let's be real. We don't always like everything during the year. And I have a few not so favorites I'm looking at right now. The Lush Lip Scrubs. I think, I think I've bought enough Lush this past year, actually these past couple years, to earn the right to talk crap about them, even just a little bit. <laughs> these guys are kind of annoying. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it rattles around. I'm always afraid that whenever I use it, it's just gonna like drop out because it's so dry. Like, I really like the Jeffree Star ones because they're constantly, it's gonna sound weird, but they're constantly wet. Like they're just perpetually wet. They have moisture to them. These ones, not so much. And honestly, the taste tastes really, really oily. So it's kind of a wonder to me how they can be so dry, but taste so oily. Like you can definitely, definitely taste that there is oil put into this, but it's so dry to the touch that it's baffling that there's any oil in it. Next up are two lip products. The first one being the NYX Bear With Me Lip Conditioner. Now don't get me wrong, I use this when I run out of my lip products, which happens often because I use them often. But this I find, as it's not that it's not good. It's just the fact that I think people tend to use it wrong and I'm one of those people. I use this like a lip balm. I apply this and use this as if it was supposed to keep my lips moisturized, like lip balm would. And I think that's my problem. I just, I don't like the idea of the product and that's going to be, that is a conditioner. It is something that you take off. It's like a hair conditioner to the hair as this would be to the lips. You put it on, you let it do its thing and then you take it off and you're whatever is supposed to be more moisturized. I leave this on and it rubs off so incredibly quick. I can't eat, I can't drink. I can't even really breathe without this coming off. It's like a slightly more moisturizing lip gloss. It's incredibly sticky as well. The next one is something I thought I was gonna like a lot more than I do. That is the Milk Makeup Kush Lip Balm. I really like the component. I really like that it's magnetic, but again, I'm using this like an actual lip balm and less like a lipstick. This is like a very slightly pigmented lip balm. It has a pigmentation to it, so when you get the like gross butthole lips, you can really, really tell because it has that pigmentation, but it really doesn't moisturize all that much. And I feel like if you market something as a lip balm, it should be more moisturizing than it is pigmented, and it's barely pigmented, so let that tell you something. I swear I love me some milk. It's just some of the products don't work for me. This is the Milk Makeup Kush Lash and Brow Serum. This was really hyped. This was supposed to be a absolute game changer. I wanted to do a review on really badly. I bought it pretty much entirely for the review. I mean, obviously to like use it. Lashes and on my brow because I have plucked a lot in my life. <laughs> I do my eyebrows almost every day and I was hoping that this would help kind of like grow them back a little bit. You can't really see it on camera right now, but I know it's there or lack thereof. 
I don't have a lot of eyebrow hair. Not even just because I plucked it, it's it's more or less the fact that I have very light hair. As you guys probably don't notice because my hair looks quite dark right now. But I have very blonde hair and my eyebrows are a lot lighter than the rest of my hair. I usually go for like a light brown, as, as you guys know because I've already talked about it. This does not work for me. I gave it try after try after try. I know it's not supposed to be like literally instantaneous, but I think I gave it a fair go and I just... Didn't find it worked for me at all, didn't notice any change in any length or velocity of my lashes or brows. I also sadly couldn't get too too much into Candy Rain, which is a conditioner from Lush. I absolutely love the smell of this. It literally smells just super sweet. It smells like candy and it kind of has almost like a rain smell to it as well like when it's rained a crap ton and then you just kind of get that smell after the rain which i absolutely love as well when i got this i got this under the pretense i guess is what you'd call it this is for people with very fine hair however that is not the case <laughs> it says shower locks in sweet tonka scented softness with glossy macadamia and brazil nut oils this where I live, the weather constantly changes up. Sometimes it's absolutely pissing rain. Sometimes it's super, super dry, but still kind of like wet out. Wintertime sucks here. I got this because again, I was under the pretense that it was made for fine hair, which I have very fine hair, but I have a lot of it. And so when I put this on my hair, it feels incredibly soft, but it weighs my hair down so much that it gets greasy within like probably about a day or two. And I can usually wash my hair only like once or twice a week. With this, I have to wash it maybe three to four times. <sighs> So I'm really really sad about this because I was really looking forward to it, but yeah. Next is this guy right here. I'm probably not going to return this because honestly it's not the worst shower scrub I've ever used, but if, if you guys watched my Christmas Lush haul, I was so 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 excited for this. Actually, it was in the one before that as well. I talked about the fact that a girl that worked there, she talked to me about the fact that they were going to be coming out with a, a cookie dough shower scrub. A sweet scrubber that smells good enough to eat. And my god, does it ever. It's, it smells a little bit, not as much cookie dough as it is just very sugary, almost like brown sugar kind of. Like I said, I'm probably not going to return this just for the sheer fact that I have tried worse ones. This is self-preserving, so you don't have to put it in like the fridge or anything like that. It's kind of hard to work with. Um, if you guys do want to see how this works, I will link it in the down bar below as well as the majority of these other items. It's really hard to work with. I've used other scrubs from them, like I use Scrub Scrub Scrub, I've, I've used Magic Crystals, and they're all like, almost like a lotion-y scrub. They have like a lotion texture to them, they have some runniness to them. This is just very, um, like, I feel like I'm working Dairy Queen. Like, it just, it's very thick and it's very hard to work with. It says how to use, apply to damp skin and gently rub to exfoliate and cleanse and rinse clean. But, like, in order to use it, you have to, like, put it in your hand and then you have to kind of, like, rub it together in your hand, which kind of defeats the purpose of using it on your legs, and then rub it onto your legs. And I just, I find it kind of difficult, like I said, to work with. I really, really like scrub to the but didn't make it into this video just because... I put it in my last year's video, I'm pretty sure, but I definitely do like Scrub Slope Scrub, and I kind of like Magic Crystals, although I prefer Scrub Scrub Scrub. That's such a mouth. But yeah. And last but not least, actually pretty much least, but not last, the 4th Ray Beauty After Hours Detox Face Oil. This had really good reviews online. When you go to the ColourPop website, it states that all people do is literally put a little bit on their hand and rub it onto their face or like pat it onto their face. I broke out because of this, like hardcore. I have very oily skin most of the time. Sometimes it's a little bit on the dry side, but for the most part, it's very oily. And people were going on raving about this, saying it's really good for oily, acne-prone skin, which your girl has. I found it just broke me out even more, which really, really sucks. So I was really looking forward to this guy. I barely used it. Like you guys can probably not even see how much I used out of it. It doesn't even help that the oil is blackened. I would probably say that is the least helpful oil I've ever used, and I've used the UFO oil. But yeah, so that is it for today's video, and I do hope you guys enjoy it, and I will see you in my next one. Ooh, actually, the next one I will see you guys in is going to be the new year, so happy new year, stay safe you guys, and...